this time, I'd like also to welcome among us uh, the YouTubers, those who are watching us uh, through YouTube. But we welcome you, and we are so glad that you are joining us together in worship. Uh, welcome. Good morning, all. Let us start with the call to worship. We are here in the name of Jesus Christ. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. We are no longer like outsiders in a foreign land, but our fellow citizens with the saints in the household of God. Let everyone praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Join me in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we celebrate the way that you choose to bring unity and peace to people through the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. He broke down long-standing walls of prejudice and hostility between Jew and Gentile, male and female, slave and free. He abolished rules that restricted life and replace them with the new commandment to love as he did. Where we have, we've gone astray, walls of prejudice still exist and barriers of racism still hold people back from teaching that true potential. We hear the great message of Jesus reconciling people to you, O oh God, and to one another, Yet we still hesitate to reach out to people when they are different in some way from us. Forgive us when we create barriers rather than bridges. And now we'll have a moment of silence. In the assurance of forgiveness, in Jesus, you who were once far off and have been brought near by the blood of Christ. In him, we have been reconciled to God through the cross, made citizens with saints and members of the household of God. Hear then the good news that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. You're taller. Here we go. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is by himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in its flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace and in one body to re reconcile the both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For though, th for the, through him we both have access to the Father of one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you, are too, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. May God bless the reading, the receiving and the hearing of his words this morning. I want to ask you, uh, we're going to open uh, this new worship series on uh, this very difficult uh, theme that uh, it really um, has become part of our own lives. More and more as time goes by, we deal all with the separation division within uh, all level of our lives. And I think it's important that as a church, as a f spiritual family, we openly um, pray about it, but also go to the scripture and find that what is that is being told to us, what is Christ is telling us, uh, how we can deal with this. And so I'd like to start asking you to join me in reading that there's a, a scripture that uh, Jeff just read for us. Christ's mission was created himself for one new humanity out of the two thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. Did you notice what the beginning of this verse is? Christ's mission. This was Christ's mission. So this is the reason why he uh, came on earth. This is why he went on the cross reconcile in one body, in one humanity, the two groups, they were filled with hostility, that despise each other, that hate each other. So this is not a side job of Jesus. Reconciliation within hostility is actually his main job description. Now, at that time when the scripture was uh, written, the two groups that uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul is talking about are, were the Jews and the Gentiles. And uh, uh, at that time, those were the group that were separating the entire life. And uh, uh, the reason why he was uh, clearly talking to them is because uh, they were completely unable to use grace in treating each other. Now, nowhere in the scripture we can find anything about asking people to think all the same. We are not supposed to become all one like the other, or we are not supposed to deny our differences. That is a gift that, you know, this is the beauty of creation, that we all have different opinions, that we all look different, that we all uh, feel in different way life. But what the Bible does say very clearly is that in Jesus we are reconciled with God and with each other. Again, with God and with each other. 
In the cross, there is no more hateful behavior or demonizing someone who has a different opinion from mine. In the cross, there is room for all of us within our differences, and yet it's a call to be connected with each other. There is a, often I have people asking me, so what does this scripture really mean? What is the interpretation of this scripture? Well, let me tell you, this scripture means what exactly it say. From two, we are supposed to become one. Now, 2,000 years ago went by after those words were written, after uh, Jesus came and died for us, after Paul worked so hard to try to reconcile Jews and Gentiles, and now we are 2022, and the question that comes to us is, how are we doing with uh, reconciling to each other? How we are doing about hostility, hatred, polarization? Just like uh, 2,000 years ago, there are people today that are still paying high price terrible consequences because of the hostility that it's part of our lives and our country. How far do you think we are leaving our lives from being the kind of Christian that Jesus asked us to be? So as we brought it up 20 years ago today, this country was shaken from the bottom of all. When 3,000 people were killed in New York and the, and the Pentagon. In the days they followed that terrible event, I bet you all remember images like this. Images of unity of people of all color and background coming together. This is actually a picture that was taken the day before. You remember how much we were connected and had a sense of unity. You remember images like this, United We Stand, a sentence that goes back to uh, the Greek time, but it was uh, coming back very clearly to all of us during that time. For a while there, for a little while, we were united. Liberals and conservatives, it was very common to see all of them together with the American flag. It was, uh, uh, I remember hearing President W. Bush at that time spoke kindly, reassuring also at a mosque to people to say, you are okay, you are protected here. I remember people of different races, religions, marching together on the street. I remember people really caring and support each other, clapping when officers were going by. A deep sense of humility, a deep sense of service were spread throughout the country. For a while there, we were uh, united. We were different, but united against violence. Well, that seems like another era from the days that we are living right now. I was reading uh, uh, some article and uh, a few survey that were taken between Democrats and Republicans. And then uh, what I was reading, I was just, I had to go back and read it twice because I could not believe. So the survey showed that uh, uh, people of different party 30, 40% answer yes to the question, do you think that the opposite party are downright evil? The people, not the party, real people. 40% of Americans think yes, they are evil. 30% agree that, listen to this, we will be better off as a country altogether if a large number of the opposite party just died. What? 30%? This, by the way, survey was done a year ago, not 20 years ago. 86% of Republicans described Democrats as a brainwashed and hateful, and 87% of Democrats described Republicans as brainwashed 
and hateful. This depolarization that has been dividing us at all level are also coming down to our community and uh, probably the most painful part also within our own family. So how many of us stop having some relationship with some member of our families because of, of uh, hateful behavior or hostility? Or how many of us are now able to celebrate the holidays together as we used to? Or you're walking on eggshell constantly, trying to walk around certain uh, subject with the fear that it will explode in a terrible fight. The depolarization is being truly dividing us, uh, and uh, all kind of bias has been spinning out of control. And of course, the social media this time around that had definitely a big part of this because it's been providing a platform for some people, many actually, many people, to just unlash anger and hatred. Because who cares, right? You just throw it out there. You don't see anyone. You are not talking to anybody. It's just going to go there on Facebook or wherever else you go without consequences. And the cost of this, the personal cost of this, has been extremely high. Violence and injustice has been going up, but also lots of anxiety, depression, isolation in people who are suffering deeply because of this situation. This has been damaging our soul. And that's why we're talking about it, church, because it's a church matter. Because when it comes down to the health of our soul, that's where we come here. Lack of grace, lack of acceptance has been deepening the misery and, and, and actually stole peace from our life and has been pulling and pulling at our life and in the direction of hopelessness and sense of helplessness. Just like it was during Jesus' time and pretty much through the entire human history, uh, we have, as human beings, the tendency of uh, have what they call a dualism thinking. This is good, this is evil, and I'm going to be right here. And then I'm right, they are wrong, and I'm going to divide the world between us and them. This is not new. This is through entire history. And the reason is because our brain is sort of built up in a way that works well with this idea of dualism. It's sort of a shortcut when we need to make a quick decision. And it works well. I mean, uh, when, in that, when we are facing a threat or a danger, we don't want it to think it through too much. We want it just to know what is good and what is bad, right? I mean, if you are facing a bear right there, you don't want to get into a big discussion within your brain. I'm wondering if he's good or bad, because if he's going to be bad. Just run away. So it's been serving us well, this way of thinking, because it's a shortcut, and we need to make fast, efficient decisions. But you see, the problem comes uh, when we use that way of thinking toward people, or when we start using that way of thinking as we try to understand where is the truth, or if we are talking about human pain, or human struggles. This dualistic way of thinking brings a toxic level of conflict. Us and them, bad and evil, those uh, groups do not cover who we are as human beings. Maybe you notice that, but I know a lot of good people who have been making bad choices, and a lot of bad people who made awesome choices. I want to show you this uh, quick video of uh, something that happened recently in a, in a jail, in a prison in uh, Georgia. 
Inmates locked up for horrible crimes came to the rescue of a deputy who passed out in front of them. Yeah, that deputy was apparently suffering from cardiac arrest. Security camera video from the Gwinnett County Jail in Georgia shows the prisoners rushing to the deputy's side after they saw him pass out cold and begin bleeding. Ooh. Well, they banged on the jail bars to alert authorities to help. The inmates say they didn't think twice about coming to the aid of the deputy. Respect goes both ways. And, um, you know, just because we've made a mistake out there, it doesn't make us bad people. Just because they chose to be a police officer or deputy, it doesn't make them a bad people. I didn't see him as an officer at that point. I just seen another human being going down, needed help. Well, the deputy is said to be doing well. The inmates are being called heroes this afternoon, and their story has become a viral sensation. Very nice. For Christ himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. In Christ, there is no more us and them, in Christ, there is uh, more than just evil and uh, good. In Christ, there are people, real people, who need my help. In Christ, uh, there are some people who humble themselves even knowing they're different from me. They may be knowing that they have different opinion from mine, but they come in my rescue when I need them and inclusive self-giving, an altruistic way of thinking is sort of the opposite of the dualistic way of thinking. I know that it's not coming natural to us, but trust me, if we want and can build a community, if we want to live a Christian life, we need to get out of that dualistic way of thinking, stop, a moment, reflect, take some time, and begin to see that person as a human being for a moment. I was reading about an unusual friendship uh, about two of the most famous uh, judges of the Supreme Court that are now both passed away, the very liberal Judge Ginsburg and the very conservative Judge Scalia. And uh, they were buddies. They were the best friends. They went out for dinner. They were destroying each other in court. But they love each other all the time. And Judge Scalia said uh, uh, this, uh, I attack her ideas, I, but I don't attack her as a person. You see, there are some very good people with very bad ideas. They respect and trust each other, and they stay best friends until the very end of their lives. You know, since we've been hearing so much about the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, I was thinking and seeing how much everyone, you know, seems to be feeling some sort of connection with that queen. And uh, not just the uh, United Kingdom, it's saddened by that loss, but many other people are truly um, moved by it. And I was thinking about why we feel this connection with her, and I think it's because uh, for 70, 70 years, this woman has been serving her country with uh, humility and altruism. We might have different opinion about monarchy or about some choices that she made, but the reality is that she truly did this for 70 years with such a uh, sense of service. And she was a figure that stand all through this time above division and separation and uh, 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 try to unite the country through all, even in very polarized time through the 70 years of her kingdom. And uh, she really transcended always this partisan divisions and uh, represent that nation. People are attracted to her because she was this strong, stable, rock in the midst of everything else that was happening. I know about another kingdom. I know about another king. His name was Jesus Christ, and his kingdom started the day that he actually came into uh, earth. And uh, 
Christ is our rock. We are attracted to him, not because he's telling us what we want to hear, but we are attracted to him because uh, you see in him is the true hope that is a stronger hope than anything else that is going on in our world. He's the foundation, the cornerstone, said the scripture today. In him, we find our hope. And in him, we really look at the cross. This symbol that is spread everywhere in the world. This symbol that for 2,000 years and be speaking clearly the truth about who Jesus was. This is the symbol of reconciliation. I know the cross also reminds us that we were forgiven for our uh, sins, but the cross is also a symbol of bridging between uh, all those differences and also reconcile us with God and with one another. When uh, we are standing at the bottom of this cross, we are all equal, let me tell you that. When we are standing at the bottom of this cross, we are all connected with each other. Because of, of Christ, we are called to be one. Not the same. Not that we are not supposed to have different opinion, but we are called to be one as human beings and reconcile to each other and love and serve each other. When we are under the cross, we can recognize that unity. We are all similar, yet unique. But when you look at the cross, always remember that it's made out of two beams, right? And I think sometimes we think about this, uh, the vertical part of the cross, the between me and God. And we think about God that gave his life to reconcile me with him and lift me up. But always there is the horizontal beam that reminds us that the reconciliation that we receive with God is also a reconciliation that we are supposed to live horizontally with one another. We are supposed to be reconciled with God and with each other in the cross, even if we are from different parties, different races, even if we are different genders, even if we express our sexuality in a different way, we are all under the same cross. We tend to take seriously the vertical part and we tend to forget the horizontal part of the cross. But remember, both sides are necessary for reconciliation. And here I have uh, three suggestions for me, myself, and for you, because I need to work on myself too very much about this. Bridging start with me and with you. And it starts with prayer. This is serious. Serious prayer, because uh, when I start praying for those who don't agree with me, they begin to uh, change in my eyes. I begin to see them uh, with grace and with God's eyes. When I pray, when I struggle with people who have different opinion from mine, I begin to find peace instead of anxiety, instead of struggle, and I feel like I'm much more clear and I become much more tolerant with others. This is what prayer does, praying every day for those who are different from you. Second, it's of course humility. In the hostility, there is not much humility. But as we are reminded by the cross, Christ forgave, forgave our bad, our faults. There is nobody right here. But we all were made right through the cross of Christ. So please use humility when you speak with someone who has different opinion from yours, who has a different color skin from yours, have different religion, a different background. Remember, we are all human beings with all with faults and all in need of forgiveness. And lastly, relationship, this is so important. 
we stop connecting with people that we don't like. And the results at a small level and a national level and world level are terrible. Instead of uh, trying to connect with people only through Facebook, uh, which is fine, but it really it's not what relationship is about. Maybe we should stay cl cl closer, grow closer with, with a person that might be different from us. Go out and get a coffee with that person. Try to listen to the struggle, and you will discover that person is so much more similar to you than you ever thought. This is a, a, such a healing process for our own life. Try to listen and grieve with the person who is different from you and listen to their lament and spend time to understand that person. You will be so surprised about the results that are going to happen. Bridging, connecting, it start with me and with you. It doesn't start in the White House. It starts here, in my heart. So my prayer is that as we journey through this month, we can truly grow in love, care, and reconciliation with each other. Amen. This time, uh, uh, we uh, set aside uh, uh, an opportunity for us to give back a, a, a little part of what we receive every day, a portion of our gifts, those gifts that can make a, a big difference in the life of many. We have many different ministries here at Salem. We are now in the middle of a campaign uh, to provide underwear and socks to the people in the community and give dignity to them. We are collecting uh, food and snacks for the elementary school nearby us. Uh, through our ministry, we can reach out so much and with the power of God, there's a little gift can be multiplied in big gift. So my uh, invitation to all of you is to enter in this time of offering with pride and joy. Prepare to go back into our world, back to our home, in our family, in our community, in this world. May the reconciliation that comes from the Christ be with you now and forever. Have the courage to connect with those who are different from you. Pray about it. Lift them up in your life and ask God to really come into this world and bring his reconciliation. May the grace of God be with you now and forever. Amen.